Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to quite an interesting one here. This patient has got a couple of earbuds lodged in both ears. And what makes, I mean, usually these cases aren't that interesting. You know, you, you go in there with crocodile forceps and you yank it out. It's very easy, very quick and, you know, instant win. You're, you know, patient's very grateful. You're a hero. Fantastic. This was slightly more complicated. These are actually biopsy forceps, but I didn't have anything else to hand at the time. Um, now, pulling on that, for some reason, really hurt the patient. And I was a little bit surprised because, again, you know, they, they, they really, most earbuds, whether they're hearing aid domes or buds from headphones or earplugs, um, you know, they slide out quite easily. This, as you can see, is almost stuck, like adhered to the canal walls. You can see how sore the skin is underneath. So what I think has happened, so I don't think these are from headphones. Now, the, the patient was perhaps was a little bit cagey. He didn't really say where the, like, what happened. He was a bit vague. I rather suspect that these earbuds, domes, ear tips, whatever you want to call them, are not from headphones. In fact, even very, very cheap headphones don't have earbuds that look like this. These are, they're very thick, you know, unusually thick, very sort of rubbery, very, you know, tacky. In other words, they're quite frictiony. They're not lovely and smooth like modern hearing aid domes or earbuds. I think what these belong to are sort of like the tiny, you see them all the time on Amazon and eBay. They're like tiny little kind of amplifier hearing aids. You can get them for under $100. But um, they usually come with like a set of earbuds, like small, medium, large, extra large, and so on. So you buy them off the internet and then they turn up and you just stick on whichever dome fits you and then you shove it in the ear and it acts as a hearing aid. And when I take it out, uh, you'll see exactly why I think that, because they don't really look like any sort of modern brand of, of headphone earbud that you would get. What I've done just with that, um, that little tool, that's a Cawthor number eight, is I've skimmed round in order to loosen it from the skin underneath. We managed to get it out here. These little crocs, the biopsy forceps were no good. These are just like normal crocodile forceps. They're actually really rubbish. I don't like using them. Um, but I had no kind of good Hartman forceps with me at the time. So we managed to get this out. Now that, that looks very, very suspiciously like the, the, those kind of earbuds that I mentioned that come in a set when you buy hearing aids um, off the internet. And so I guess kind of the fact that it was kind of cemented onto the ear canal wall was a, a source of pain. And then of course, big old plug of wax, which has been pushed right down into the ear canal and the inner two thirds of the ear canal are very thin skin on bone, very sensitive, very likely to cause discomfort if it's under any kind of pressure or if there's like a big plug of wax pushed down there, which there is. So we'll get rid of this. Eardrum looks actually quite good. There's a little bit of redness to the skin where, where, where I, it was kind of cemented, um, but nothing really that serious going on. No active bleeding, which is good. Uh, the skin just looks a little bit irritated. So. Anyway, I was skimming round and yes, yeah, see right there, there's potentially some hematoma, but it's not really anything to worry about. So yeah, I skimmed around with the Cawthorn. This side here um, was significantly more painful. So again, I thought I would go in with, I'm going to call them snub nose crocs. Um, they're nowhere, yeah, I mean, they're just, they're just, they're just a pain in the neck, really. They're nowhere near as good as the regular Crocs. But anyway, grabbing onto this side was significantly more painful. It, I mean, he didn't like jump through the ceiling or anything. He would have probably if I'd persisted and yanked it out, he probably would have jumped through the, you know, two story building and up into the sky. Um, but he kind of ye let out kind of a little yelp. Um, now, yeah, you can see how stuck it is there. So now I, the reason that I skim around with the tool is because I learned the hard way through doing Phonak Lyric hearing aids, which are hearing aids that we put very deep into the ear canal, about four mils from the eardrum, and then they stay there for several months. Now, if those hearing aids get wet, they tend to stick 
to the ear canal quite significantly and they're very difficult to remove. And if you yank on them with forceps, you will cause quite a mess. You know, they'll be bleeding, hematoma, patient will be, you know, in massive amounts of discomfort. So what, you're, what I've learned to do is grab a cawthorn, hook number six, number eight, whatever, skim round, detach it from the canal, and then you can pull it out relatively easily. But you have to lay the groundwork, and that's what I'm trying to do here. Again, you'll notice that I'm not really pulling with the crocs. I'm just kind of going up and down like that to try and loosen. So it's sort of slow and steady wins the race, really. But um, I have to say, and you can, you can see how thick and rubbery these tips are. So whilst they will kind of work, they are quite unsuitable, really, to, to be shoved into ears. Um, and it, I mean, obviously, they've, they've come off the hearing aid as he's tried to extract it and then got stuck in the ear. So really, probably not a good material to use. So again, going in with the Cawthorn, again, I think a St. Bart's hook here would just be annoyingly large. Um, and again, just wiggling here just to try and detach it. He's okay with this. He doesn't mind this at all. Again, I'm sort of communicating with him all the time going, is this hurt? Does this hurt? And anytime he says that it's uncomfortable, I just simply move to a different area and start again, detaching, 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 and so on. Going in with the snub nose crocs. And this is where I get it, I think. Yeah. So again, it's not just a pull. It's a kind of pull and up and down motion. And whilst it does take a while, it's totally worth it. So there we go, slightly different shape. I guess this is just a different size that came in the kit. And going back in, again, there's wax in the ear, which I guess probably made the hearing aid ineffective or, or feedback, which is like whistling or squealing from a hearing aid. Again, you don't tend to see it much these days with modern hearing aids, um, but kind of older style hearing aids or um, I, analog hearing aids, um, if the sound bounces off the wax and leaks back into the microphone then it will squeal and stuff like that, which can be really annoying. But um, modern digital hearing aids have all sorts of very, very clever processing strategies to stop feedback. Um, so if the hearing aid, you know, starts to amplify itself, which is, which will cause the oscillation, will cause the feedback, then it can recognize that and simply like invert the phase. Um, to stop itself from whistling and you know in amongst various other very very clever and quick signal processing techniques to stop that from happening but you can get lots and lots of volume out of a hearing aid these days without it whistling so we tend to find if a hearing aid is whistling all the time there's either wax or some kind of obstruction or it's not been fitted properly so again just kind of grabbing this last kind of sheet of dead skin and wax and at this point, I probably could have gone in with Crocs, but again, I don't have any good ones. I just have those really rubbish snub nose ones. Um, I can't remember where I bought these actually. I think I bought them on a whim and thinking, hey, these will be great. They look really tiny in the picture, um, but they're just com you know, completely friggin' useless. Um, so we'll have a look at the, uh, the eardrum and ear canal. It looks okay, doesn't it? It looks relatively unscathed. And obviously patient having those removed, having all that pressure gone and the wax gone and stuff, feeling miles better. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I just advised him that if he needs a hearing aid, I did it tactfully, but I said, if he needs a hearing aid, you know, get referred to the NHS um, or, or go to a reputable independent provider and, and you can look at private hearing aids there. So there we go. There are little patches of redness, but I don't think there's anything serious there. And again, I've seen, much, much worse, um, you know, doing it the wrong way, you know, yanking it, that is definitely the wrong way to do it. So there we go. I hope you found that video interesting. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.